What's up everyone, it's Tim here, your no-code AI automation expert, and in today's video, I will basically go and explain to you how HTTP uh, request nodes are working in NA10. So if you are a total beginner or if you're someone that just wants to know uh, how this node actually works in NA10, then this video is for you. Now, I will first explain you very, very like beginner-friendly um, you know, how you can use HTTP request node, why we're using it, and also, uh, I will also execute this workflow that I have in front of me. I will explain everything in detail so you don't have to worry about anything. Now, uh, keep in mind, if you want this type of templates, plug and play templates, you can go to our group. We have a free group where we basically, you know, uh, give away free templates from our uh, videos. So if you wanna do that, all the links are in the description. But uh, let's get started with HTTP request node. So, <clears throat> sorry, but uh, yeah, let's get started. So uh, the first thing you want is, you wanna understand is there are two different ways how you can actually integrate uh, an application, a software, or really any platform like AI model as well within NA10, right? So first, you need to understand uh, why we are using HTTP request nodes. So we're using HTTP request nodes where we cannot directly integrate uh, a software or an app inside of our workflows, right? So for example, uh, you know, if I want to go here and if I want to open, uh, if I want to add a node here, and let's say I want to use uh, this software right here. This is called Gina AI. This is basically a scraper tool, and I, I would be uh, I want to be able to use this in my N8N workflow, but I cannot use it because there is no Gina AI right here inside N8N. So what do we do? We have to use the HTTP request node. This is a, a node or a webhook. It's a, like a type of a webhook that you basically uh, can get and extract information from. So for example, right, uh, since we're using here scraper tool for an example, uh, you first need to understand how the HTTP request node works. So you have different methods. You have get method, you have post method. These are usually two main methods that you're using. So for this example, we wanna actually get the scraping data from the scraper, right? So we use the get method. If you wanna post the data, inside of our workflow, then we're using the post method. However, in most cases, it will be either get or post, but in this case is get. And for example, if you're going in a, this tool right here has like a free API. So if you scroll here, uh, as you can see, here is the, uh, the API key as well, right? So we have the API key right here. We can copy the API key for free. And we also have in the reader um, actually the endpoint URL. Now the endpoint URL is basically this URL that you have right here. So let's go and let's break it down why you need this URL. So first of all, uh, this is the endpoint URL. So let me actually go. So this is the endpoint URL. I'll just copy it here just so it's a, a bit easier for you to understand. And we have the endpoint URL here right? And uh, here example.com is actually the website that we want to scrape with this particular tool. So again, HTTP request node will be different for each tool because each tool has a different endpoint. Think of endpoint like a URL that basically gives you information about that tool and that you can use for extracting any information from that tool, right? So for example, with Gina AI, what we wanna do is we wanna extract information from this URL. So we simply copy that URL and we put it right here, right? And that's where this link is coming from. And uh, I'll just delete this one. So that's where this link is coming from. Now, what I want with this link is I go if I go here, if I paste it here, this is the link that we're actually scraping data from. So we wanna scrape data from this website uh, this is like a real estate website called Trulia, and that's why we added the uh, Trulia website on top of the endpoint of Gina AI. 
And again, the endpoint can be seen here. In most endpoints, you have curl and then you have the endpoint. So that's basically how you can actually go and uh, get started with the HTTP node. Now, once you have the, uh, the get method right here, so we're getting the information, we're extracting information from this website by using the endpoint from Gina AI. Now, once we have that, we want to go here and click generic credential type. And then we simply want to go and click header authorization. And uh, header authorization is the type of authorization that uses this type of authorization. So, uh, and when you see this, right, if you see this in any of the platforms that you're using, um, you will be able to see the authorization and then bearer and then the API key. So that's how the, the uh, parameters are structured. Now, if I want to go here and if I, let's say I want to do the header authorization, this is what is called header authorization. I go here and I enter the name to be authorization and I enter the API key to be this right here, right? So this is the, the value. And uh, once I paste this in, I can actually go and I can test this step and as you can see, I will get the output, which will be the scraping data from this website right here. So as you can see, it does take some time to actually go and, and get the data here. Uh, as you can see, we got the data here. And then obviously with that data, you can do whatever you want, right? In this case, what we're doing is when we get the data, we have an information extractor that extracts only the most important information and then we split out the uh, information and send it to Google Sheets, right? And in the Google Sheets, um, this is where we can see the real estate agent information. And this is where basically we're getting information about sale, selling price from the property. We're getting, uh, you know, uh, the uh, property location, uh, type of the property and stuff like that. With the AI agent, what we're doing is right here based on the data, uh, we're actually, uh, as you can see, input data about all the properties will come from here. And then we have JSON input and that JSON output, sorry. And that output is coming from the HTTP request node, which we had previously. So again, HTTP request node is, is, is truly a really great in, invention, I would say, in, uh, um, in NA10, because with this node, you can do a lot of different things. Right with this node, uh, as you can see, you can fetch the information from you know uh, other APIs, and again, you need to understand how the APIs are working and what are the endpoint URLs. Keep in mind, like for some uh, for some um, platforms, you will need to actually have like a different, or you will have a different authorization. So maybe it will be you know authorization with let's say if we go here with custom authorization, right? Custom authorization is different because with custom authorization, you need a JSON file. I mean, we could also do the JSON file here. We can, uh, you know, uh, go here. And as you can see, we have like a lot of these things, but uh, yeah, like usually you will need to do it through the a their API. And then, you know, for from here, you can immediately see that this is a header authorization, right? So if you go here and if we go Okay, we need a header authorization. And then as you can see, we have it right here and that's it, right? So it's uh, very simple, but um, yeah. And uh, again, this is like how HTTP request works. So when you don't have an app um, right here, so for example, I can use Trello, right? But if I don't have Trello, I will need to use the HTTP node or HTTP request node. So that's what I'm trying to say here when I'm explaining the HTTP request node. Now, let me actually go and let me let me show. So I'll leave without saving here. Uh, let me actually see if I can show you another HTTP request node. Yeah, for example, here, this is an AI agent for content research and content creation. So basically, whenever something happens in the content research, uh, a Google Sheet, when the, when there is a row added or updated, that is when the HTTP request node here will go into Tavily and Tavily is basically like a research tool. So if I go here again, 
just like in the previous node we have Gina AI in this node we have Tavily and uh, let me just actually log in here and uh, let me actually log in right and Tavily as you can see I have a, a API key here and I have like thousand credits for free and with Tavily again you have like a URL an endpoint URL which is search right app epi.tavily.com slash search and then we have a JSON body here a JSON body in this case is a body that connects the API key right so we have the API key here and by the way API keys do not ever share them publicly like I'm doing right now I will delete this API key after I record the video but uh, as you can see this is the API key so this is how this HTTP node will authorize uh, the data that is coming from Tavily AI and then we have query query is JSON dot query and query is usually coming from the previous node so if you execute the previous notes here as you can see query is coming from the recent trends in food service industry and that query came from the Google Sheets trigger so when I put an industry right which is food, uh, not actually food trends, but which is the query, recent trends in the food service industry, that is a niche. When I put in a niche, I want, I want to put that inside of query here because I wanna use Tavily, API key from Tavily to connect to Tavily, query to actually put or insert the input in the Tavily, and then search depth, I can either do basic, advanced, medium, and based on all of these, I'm getting the output, which if we test this out here, we'll get the output right here, as you can see. So these are all the results for my query, which is called recent trends in the food service industry. Now, keep in mind, this is for the Tavily because Tavily is the researcher, AI researcher that based on the input researches something and basically outputs something for us. So that's what the HTTP request node is for right and that's what we're using http node for so in tavily you can also go into um so right here you have like everything but if you want to go and if you want to see the documentation you need to go to the documentation and here in the api reference here you can actually see uh, you know the uh, tavily url as you can see and that url is something we're using here and by the way this is a post method because after the Tavily gets the data, we want to post it inside of our uh, workflow, which is inside of this. And then we split uh, the, um, you know, we split the results here, so that we have results with the title and with results with the raw content. And then we aggregate the results. So we put all the data into single list right here. It's currently empty because we don't have any data. But from there, we uh, from that data. LinkedIn uh, AI agent will actually go and here is the prompt will actually go and create a LinkedIn post based on the data we have X which is Twitter AI agent will create Twitter post and post it on Twitter this is posted on LinkedIn and then blog will do the blog that's why we want to go here and that's why we actually want to have the title and the raw content uh, because when we're posting on social media we want to have the title and raw content so uh, but yeah, as you can see, this is how the HTTP node works. Again, um, you know, in each API um, section in the tool, so let's say I want to use Tavily, you always go to the documentation, and in the documentation you can see how you can authorize the, uh, the API key. So as you can see, I can also authorize it with a bearer token, which was also done in the Gina AI as well. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, you can use what I'm doing, you know, if you're a beginner, uh, you can use like Quen AI model or chat GPT. You can go on Quen and you can say, you know, something like, you know, go here and you can say, hey, I want to use uh, this in HTTP node in NA10. Can you give me, uh, can you give me the JSON for this? right a JSON structure and then it will give you right here certainly to use endpoint right you need to configure the JSON body and as you can see right here you're getting the JSON body and you're getting the query right here which is as you can see so 
you can also authorize this in different ways you can go here on uh, authentication you know a generic credential type or actually predefined and then you can go here not predefined sorry generic and then you can go here to header authorization and you can go here and add the as you can see in Quen, it's saying authorization bearer which is this and then content type application json so you can put that inside of this or even better what you can do is you can send headers and then here you can put authorization bearer and then api key your api key right and then you can add parameters content type and then you can add the application json inside of that so always use the tools you have uh, at your disposal to actually make this easier for you and the more you do this the more you connect the http request the better uh your uh you will like understand better how it works so that's what the http request is doing right hopefully i kind of explain this in a in a good way um and uh, yeah if you have any specific questions make sure to comment below and if you want to know more about the uh, http nodes um you know about uh how to set up n8n again you have a free group uh which you can join uh, after this uh video so uh yeah guys hopefully you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you in the next video